Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great, great day today. Um, today is a very, very special and important day to me. Today is the day that I became a mother. Uh, 14 years ago today at 2.01 p.m., my very first baby, my little Autumn, was born. Um, and because of that, I'm going to do what I have done on her sister's birthdays, as well as I will do on her other sister and brother's birthdays, and I'm going to tell you the story of the day she was born. Um, much like her siblings, it begins the day before she was born. Um, I had my 40-week appointment, and my doctor went ahead and decided that because I was so young, that he wanted to have me induced um, at midnight going in to the 1st of October. Now the reason for that is because one, I was young, and two, October 1st was also her due date. So I called my mom, I was at my boyfriend's house, I called my mom and I told her and she told my dad and all of that. Um, and then at like 11.30 or so we left for the hospital start the induction we got there a little bit after midnight um, because we got off on the wrong freeway exit um, so we get there and they have me sign the papers and everything and sorry I'm getting a little teary eyed already <laughs> um, uh, they had me sign the paperwork and all of that and they put the little monitors on my tummy and it was determined after monitoring me for about an hour, no, it couldn't have been an hour, roughly, let's just say an hour, um, it was determined that I was actually in early labor. At that point, I was given the choice between going ahead and with the induction or um, just like seeing what would happen on its own, see if it would progress on its own. I was very, very impatient and wanted to meet my baby, so I went ahead and said okay to the to proceed with the induction which at that point was just pitocin at a very very low drip um so about an hour later let's just say it was like two o'clock in the morning um everyone fell asleep and when i say everyone i mean there was a lot of people there was obviously me her father her her dad's brother so her uncle um a former friend of mine um somebody else i think another friend of ours was there um and i think two other friends of ours were there i'm not sure there's a lot of people basically thank god the room we had was like as big as my bedroom now like yeah so anyway we all kind of fall asleep and then around like mm, let's say 6 30 7 in the morning doctor comes in checks me at that point i believe i was at a Four, a three or a four I was a one and a half to two when I came in um, so you know pretty pretty good you know considering and all of that considering I was sleeping um, so at that point my doctor decides to go ahead and break my water and man I wish I would have waited on that because at that point before that I felt like zero contractions I was totally fine once my water broke as I'm sure a lot of people feel oh my god I thought I was dying like legit thought I was dying so my mom got there around 8 30 in the morning or so 8 30 in the morning and um I think it was at four at that point and I was begging for an epidural. Um, my mother would not consent to the epidural, so I did not have one. Uh, she did, however, let me get something called Nubane, and it, I don't know, like, it just took the, like, I still felt everything, but it just made it bearable. So I guess it was kind of like taking a Tylenol for a headache, kind of is how I would describe it. Other than that, like, it made me almost in, like, a catatonic state. Like, I was aware of what was going on around me, but I couldn't move, and I couldn't say anything, and I couldn't do anything. So that was pure hell. Um, and that only lasted, I think, like, two or three hours. So it's, like, say around noon at this point. Um, and it wore off, and I was in hell. And I remember I wanted one thing in the world. I wanted one, one thing in the world. I wanted to know when the pain was going away. Simple request, right? I thought it was. 
So, um, my friend, I, I remember saying, I'm like, shut up, I don't want to have any noise. All I want to know is when the contraction starts to go down, the numbers on the monitor start going down, like, just tell me, let me know. That way I know. And I apologize for the lighting in here. I'm in my bedroom and I have a window open right there, but, like, the lighting still is kind of funky, so sorry about that. But anyway, um, all I wanted to know was when the pain was going away. So my friend Shayna was my saving grace at that point. She was the only angel telling me the pain was going away. Um, her dad was like, no, focus on your breathing. And I was like, if you come near me, I'm going to like grip your throat out, like seriously through your ear. So stop it. Um, but around 1.30 at this point, the doctor comes in, tells me I'm at 10 and I can finally start pushing. Um, well, that doesn't mean I can start pushing that second. It means, oh, wait for everybody to leave and for us to turn the room over into a delivery room and then you can push. So it was actually closer to like 145, 150. Uh, and this is where for me, it gets very, very fuzzy because I was in so much pain. I had piggybacking contractions at that point that I don't remember a lot of this part. Like the pain was so intense that I don't remember hardly any of this part, but I do remember some things. I remember whenever they told me to try a push and I remember them saying, wow, you're good at that. And I was like, I don't know how to respond to that. And I still don't know how 14 years later. And then I remember when they said, oh, you're, she needs an episiotomy. And I remember Autumn's dad, like his face just kind of went white because he, he almost fainted in the childbirth classes and really just showed the picture of what an episiotomy is. And I mean a drawing, like those like, you know, figure one drawings. It's like a dotted line where they show where it would be cut. He almost passed out for that. So I remember he just turned white. And then I remember the shot that they give to Numb. It felt like a pinch and it hurt like hell because, you know, lady bits and everything. And then um, I remember being told to push again. And I swear it felt like I was pushing forever. But really, I wasn't. I started pushing around 1.45, and then at 2.01, she was born. So it was like 15 minutes I was pushing. Um, but I remember her head coming out, and I remember thinking that I was done, and I was so wrong. I was not done. And then I remember her feet, and I remember feeling just like that, and her feet were coming out. It was so weird. And then she was born, and she was put on my stomach, and I remember thinking, oh my god, there's no way this little baby can weigh more than six pounds because she felt so so small but they took her off to be weighed and she was seven pounds eight ounces and 20 and a half inches and I was just like shocked I was shocked how big she was but everybody came in and it was very it was very very nice um and we decided on her middle name at that point because he had wanted one thing and I wanted something else and I won so, um, but yeah, that, that's the story of Otto's birth. I guess it's just a typical everyday birth, but to me, it was one of the best days of my life. The best day of my life up to that point. Um, she's brought me more joy than I can ever really like describe. Like she, because of her, I'm the person I am today. Like seriously, I owe everything to her. Um, Normally, whenever I end these videos, I have pictures of the baby's first few days, hours and days of their life. Um, however, I'm not going to end autumns like that, simply because when her father and I did break up about a year after she was born, all the pictures that were taken that day were taken pretty much by him and his mom, so they have all of them, and he and I are not on great terms at all. And so I don't really have any. My mom has some that she has sent me and I'm going to add those. But for her, I'm going to do pictures, some of the pictures that I do have of her from, you know, birth to now, basically. Um, yeah, so that is that. Um, thank you for watching. If you like these type of videos, go ahead and press the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And I will talk to you guys next week at some point. Bye.